the pending home sales index for March is released at 10 a.m. Eastern, kicking off a key week of data in the real estate market stateside. Meantime, attention is going to be focused on the S&P Case-Shiller Home Index that's out tomorrow. Housing activity widely viewed as one black spot on an otherwise bright U.S. economic horizon. Now, the release has come after an influential portfolio manager, Jeffrey Gunlack, said uh, to investors to short the home builder stocks via an ETF. The manager of the Double Line Total Return Fund told a conference Friday that home ownership rates will fall to levels not seen since the 1980s as baby boomers retire and millennials wait longer to form households. The comments pushed the S&P Home Builders ETF lower in the Friday session. Joining us now from New York is Shari Olofsson, who is the CEO of the Carnegie Group. Shari, let me bring up a couple of different points with you. First up, on the back of bank earnings season, we saw the refinancing rates were tapering off for many of the big banks. What is this suggesting about the appetite in the real estate market? Well, all of the indicators, Karen, are pointing in the same direction right now, which is a slowdown. So let's say home sales, for example, we know are down. Home prices are about half the level in terms of increases that they were last year. And we know that those are all a result of a rolling back of two artificial influencers that have been in the market for the last two years. That is the low interest rates and those investors who were chasing the bargain basement priced foreclosures and short sales. The problem is, as those influencers roll back, they're revealing the real health of U.S. housing. And the one missing piece is obviously traditional buyers, both the move-uppers and the first-timers, like you Sorry. mentioned, are not there, inclu including the ho new household formations. My apologies, Shari. You're just going to break in because we are getting some breaking news from AstraZeneca. Uh, let's come back to our, our conversation with Shari Olufsen. Shari, apologies for the interruption there on this big M&A deal that could be worth more than $100 billion on market. But um, let's just pick up on some of these points. Uh, there have been a lot of buyers taken out of the market, as you've seen keys returned in this crisis. But there is a point that boomerang buyers, uh, those were traditionally that handed back the keys and there were foreclosures, are now coming back to the market. Can you explain that to us and how strong that market is? Sure. Ironically, the folks that actually brought the market down may actually bring the market back up. We know that there are somewhere between 5 and 8 million of these people. Now, in the U.S., Karen, there's a mandatory waiting period if you lose your home to a short sale or foreclosure. Generally, that ranges from anywhere from 2 to 7 years, depending on the exact circumstances. But the government is really working to try to get these folks back into housing, and about 80 percent of them say they would like to buy again. So, for example, we have a new, relatively new program from FHA called the Back to work program that will allow these folks back into home ownership in as little as a year. And like I said, they may actually save the housing market. So much for people being scarred from that type of investment. But what's the price tag of now buying in it? Because presumably they handed back the keys when the property market had crashed. Now they're trying to get back into a market where prices have escalated. So are they looking at overpaying for this type of asset? Well, it's interesting because we're seeing more inventory and it's really bifurcated by price range. We will be seeing more uh, inventory available in the price range that these folks are looking at, which is generally under $300,000. And Karen, when you look at the decrease in sales, that's where we're seeing the biggest hits because of tight credit. So for example, in the price range of say under $100,000, sales are down by over 18%. Whereas in the price range of over a million dollars, sales are actually up by almost 10%. So what this, new revelation is in housing is reflecting is also a broader picture of the U.S. economy and folks are really struggling. Wages are not up, uh, credit is tighter and there are issues, there are still headwinds. Maybe 20 percent of people with a mortgage are still underwater. We're talking about big issues still in housing that these, these uh, removal of the low interest rates and investors are really revealing for us. Ashara, you're staying with us. Let's come back to the discussion in just a bit. But in the meantime, a couple of other top stories to be aware of. Now, is it a case of blame it on the rain? The 1989 Milli Vanilli uh, hit uh, seems to be a soundtrack for the current earnings season with 60% of the S&P 500 companies blaming the weather during their investor conference calls. According to FactSet Research, FedEx was one of the worst offenders, mentioning the weather some 41 times on that call. Alan Nuckman is with us. He's chief market strategist at AT One Stop Option. He joins us from the CME trading floor and staying with us in New York, Shari Olufsen, who is the CEO of the Carnegie Group. Alan, kick this off for us. Uh, the Fed minutes coming up this week, which is all important for investors. Do you think it's going to be singing the weather tune as well? 
Uh, I don't think they're going to mention it. I think it's full steam ahead. The Fed's doing what it needs to do to, to support the markets, and uh, they've, they've played this very, very well. I think our focus for investors is people are getting a little bit uh, overemphasizing when it comes to the NASDAQ stocks. Again, the NASDAQ is not the stock market. So, yes, we've had a bit of a pullback. We had technically a 10% correction in the NASDAQ, and then it bounced back half. But if we put in perspective, last week, we gave up our gains on Friday, and we finished unchanged on the week. But at least we had gains to give up, and we were only 10 points away from the all-time highs in the S&P on Thursday. Shari, we were having a conversation before about some of the weaknesses now creeping into the housing market. How much of that do you think was weather-related? Very little. I mean, we've got fundamental issues here, most of which have to do with financing and interest rates in particular are key there. Uh, when it comes to housing financing, for example, we know and, and Worldwide Exchange has reported that a lot of the banks are letting a lot of their mortgage folks go. Uh, that's because home mortgages have become very non-profitable sector because of all these new regulations. We know FHA is now requiring mortgage insurance be paid for the full life of the loan. There are bills pending now to reform Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So the finance aspect of it and access, access to funds for most Americans is key, way more key than the weather. Alan, let me just switch tones a little bit because there's been an enormous amount of activity on the M&A front over here in Europe and some of it involving U.S. companies, mm -hmm. namely Pfizer and GE. How strong a signal do you think that's going to be for market confidence? We've also got talk of fresh sanctions against Russia from the U.S. Well, those are two separate issues, but I think the M&A activity is very reflective of the fact that the market is strong and people are looking for it to stay strong. Why would a company merge or why would somebody buy somebody else if they thought that the market would turn down and you could buy it at a discount? So obviously, they still see this trend very much intact. And when we see the issue with Ru Ukraine and Russia, you know, I think it's, it's the good old follow the money type theory that I think this is a battle that's going to be solved because of the economic sanctions and the market capitalization loss that's happening in Russia is going to put pressure on them eventually. Their stock market is down 25% from the October highs. And it's down here on five-year lows. I think that's really where the punishing comes in. And all this other military talk is just nonsense. Uh, the money is where uh, people get hurt the most. Thank you very much, uh, both of you. We are looking at a slightly positive start for the U.S. market today. Ellen Nuckman with us, Chief Market Strategist at One Stop Option. And Shari Olson, the CEO of the Carnegie Group with us.